I'm making a follow-up video to my um, recreation video of the Hectic uh, Demon Dialer from 1991. Just a little bit of background. Hectic was a Dutch-based um, uh, hacking group back in the early 90s that published a uh, newsletter, a magazine, very informative. And uh, they were known for having a very high technical level of achievement. And um, some of their members came up with this um, blue box, actually rainbow box uh, is a better description, uh, which was really the uh, the pinnacle of the blue box art at the time for the phone, phone hacking crowd. Of course, none of this really works anymore except on private systems like my Project MF uh, system, which is a modification of a project that was started by uh, Mark Bean or Fiber Optic as he was known in the day. And I've uh, modified it a bit from his original design to um, allow blue boxing, U.S. style blue boxing. Uh, but anyway, this could be actually used on uh, several different tone systems that uh, were in use primarily in Europe uh, during the day, as I mentioned on my previous uh, video. So anyway, uh, looking at the hardware here a little more closely, the way the box generates all its tones is it takes seven bits from the output port of the MC60HC705C8 microcontroller, and it feeds them into this uh, re resistor network here that you can see these tiny little 16th watt resistors. And uh, by putting a different 7-bit uh, value on the seven output uh, lines on the output port, you can create a 128-step output voltage ranging from zero to the to almost the supply voltage of the circuit. So just by adjusting the seven bit value, you can generate a uh, several discrete steps of voltages by applying that to this resistor network. And that comes off the end of the network here, the uh, selected voltage. So if you had zero in all seven bits, you'd get zero volts. If you had uh, seven all turned on, you'd theoretically get five volts or a bit under actually and then you can do intermediate values. If you change that rapidly enough, um, according to a sine wave pattern that's stored in the ROM of the chip, you can actually generate AC waveforms by passing them through a coupling capacitor, which I've got here, which converts the DC voltage to, a, uh, to, an, AC, to an AC voltage for amplification. So um, there's uh, the possibility of generating some very good quality tones and it sounds much better than the square wave output that was used by, um, I'll say, the um, Steve, uh, uh, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs Blue Box, which used a, um, a uh, different scheme to generate their tones and generated a rather buzzy sounding square wave output, uh, as did many of the boxes back in the day. But this, is, this sounds much better, and it was really a, a, a very uh, advanced technique and it made this box highly desirable. Uh, so the um, original design had um, 100K and 200K resistors that were used on this ladder network. And because the values of those were so high, it limited the amount of current that could be pulled out of the, um, out of the circuit. And the original amplifier circuit that was put after this digital analog converter resistor network had to have a uh, emitter follower discrete transistor pre-amplifier stage before feeding it to a very common LM386 uh, chip here, which is a, uh, it's a chip that's been around forever since the 80s, I think. And uh, it's a very easy to use, very low cost audio amplifier that has a very low external parts count. So um, I was looking for a way to eliminate the rather complicated pre-amplifier stage. So uh, by reducing the resistor value here, and um, I was able to, uh, avoid needing to use the preamp because now I can draw a bit more current. Uh, the chip itself has a um, has a 40k input impedance that's native, but I'm putting a 10k volume control in front of that, so uh, the input impedance actually is reduced a bit to 10k. But that's still you know high; it's considered high impedance. So what I do is I take this DC voltage, which is generating a sine wave or approximated sine wave. And if you were to look at the output of that, you, it would look like a stair step. It would, it would jump up and down from its maximum to minimum voltage and then the other direction 
and 128 discrete steps. So it looks a bit like a staircase going up and down as it rotates through the, the sine wave pattern. Uh, so it needs some kind of filtering to smooth out those steps into a um, and remove the sampling frequency, which otherwise would show up as kind of a hiss or a buzz in the output, uh, audio output. So after a capacitor coupling this, which turns it into an AC waveform, what I've done is fed it into um, two resistors and two capacitors, which make up a low-pass filter with a center frequency of about about 3,500 hertz, which knocks out that seven kilohertz sampling frequency. And the output of that filter, if you look at it again on a oscilloscope, looks very much like a pure sine wave that has been generated through analog means. So I merely take the output uh, on that red wire there from the two-stage low-pass filter, and I feed that into a 10K uh, pot that's referenced to ground, and then I tap on the center tap off and feed that directly into the LM386. Uh, the LM386 is set for its default voltage gain of 20, but because you're powering this off 5 volts, there's very little headroom for any voltage gain because the input and output signals are roughly uh, the same voltage. So you're mostly getting current gain, more current driving capability on the output of this chip, and that allows you to drive uh, lower ohm, 8 ohm speakers without having to worry too much about impedance. What I'm using is this uh, Western Electric U1 earpiece element. This has a characteristic impedance of about 150 ohms. Originally on the back of these, they had a um, a um, a back-to-back -back diode component on here that would uh, clip the audio so that if there were lightning strikes on the phone line, it wouldn't deafen you and, and it would soften the clicks coming from the dial and going on and off hook. You have to remove that. If you don't, it will de distort it. That was looked like a little capacitor wired across the two terminals. So here you can see where I've kind of clipped that off. So that is a necessary step if you use something like that. The volume and tone quality are quite good with this um, uh, at 150 ohms. And those can be gotten out of an old Western Electric um, Model 500 telephone set. Uh, the other piece of this that um, is critical is the, let me find it here. <laughs> there it is. The um, 2N2902, I think, uh, PNP transistor. That ties to pin, the very first pin on the lower side of the opposite side of the of the uh, chip here, this yellow lead. That goes through a 1K resistor to the base of the transistor. And normally that pin is high or not generating any current at all. But when you press the escape button to uh, turn on the circuit, it applies, uh, it removes the voltage. It goes from five volts down to zero volts and grounds it. And what that does is apply voltage from the uh, five volt power rail to the, uh, the pin and allows the uh, circuit to turn on and off the amplifier along with the um, microprocessor going into uh, sleep mode. So the code takes care of the timing of that to be sure the amplifier is turned on before the tone is generated when, this, uh, when the unit is awaking from its sleep state. And then conversely, when it's going to sleep, it turns off the tone. And then the last thing it does is switch off the, um, the amplifier. So when this thing is in auto power down mode, no current is being drawn by this at all. And by pressing the, um, by pressing the key here, somewhere here, there it is. When pressing the key here uh, and waking it up, it, uh, it starts drawing, I think about 17 milliamps of power. It's not, it's not a real current hog. This sounds pretty good. It's, um, considering it doesn't have much voltage gain, it really, really has pretty good really has pretty good sound. And then uh, when it powers down again, you know, everything's off. I've also changed from going from three batteries to four batteries, and I'm passing the power now through a, a, um, a diode here that provides about a half volt of um, a voltage drop before it goes to the circuit. And uh, that gets the six volts, nominal six volts from this battery pack down into a range that the processor is still 
reasonably happy with. And it also provides some reverse um, reverse voltage protection in case you wire up the battery backwards for any reason. So yeah, it's a good design principle. It cost me an extra battery here, but I probably get more battery life out of the added capacity and some protection for the circuit and um, an overall better performance, especially on the LM386, which likes to see um, five volts at least. With the three volt setup, you're only getting about four, a little over four volts. And there was noticeably increased distortion and hiss and instability at that voltage level. So this just gets it up more into its minimum voltage operating range. Um, so all in all, um, I'm gonna sketch this out, this new output circuit, and probably prepare a new, more easily read schematic for it, and uh, put that out there on the on the web in some in some form and um, the design is pretty much complete all that remains is to put it into a um, enclosure and to get this mess of wires distilled down into a nice piece of prototyping board and uh, all put in a box so i'm going to start laying that out today